are, are finished. Uh, no, but Councillor Prude, so you put your name on after we, sh uh, we finish. So we're, I'm going to ask Councillor Cho now. Councillor Cho, you mentioned earlier you had a petition. If you want to get up and present it. Yeah, but can you get, we need to take a motion to receive it. Oh, yes, yes. So you have a petition with how many names? 161. Okay. So Councillor Cho has uh, submitted in a petition, recorded vote to receive the petition. We're in the middle of a vote, Councillor Peruzza. Councillor Perks, please. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously 35 in favor. Okay, Councillor De Grande. Point of order, Councillor Peruzza? Uh, my point of order is, is this, Speaker. I just wanted to get an opinion from you. Uh, I saw the list. The list was open. I put my name. Is, is the, does, do the standing rules say that at some point um, you, you decide to to, to add no more names to, to the list of questioners or speakers, okay. and therefore we're not able to, because I pushed the button, my name went on the screen, Councilor, there was Cal no cutoff. No, Councillor Peruzza. Can I get an Cal opinion from yes. you? Yes, I'll tell you what the opinion is. Councilor or a ruling, Ford, rather. Councillor Ford was the last name on the list. Once he completed, I went to Councillor De Grande to speak, and then there was an interruption. So he was, I had well, gone, he was, no, I had gone to the next speaker. No, what? Well, no, no, you didn't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Councillor De Grand to speak. Councillor De Grand to speak. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I said I was at the next speaker. Councillor De Grand to speak. Madam Chair. Uh, yes. I, I did circulate a, uh, a motion which has been uh, revised, and I would ask oh, staff oh. to... Madam Chair, could I please have a point of order here? Personal privilege. <laughs> it's revised. Madam Chair. I know. Uh, Councillor DeGrant, I, I mean, there's interruptions. Everyone's interrupting this meeting today. Everybody is. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Perks. Yes, speaker. Don't speak in the background, speaker. Yes. Can you please try to behave yourself? Would you like a timeout, or what would you like? Okay. If that's the way you want to be treated, that's the way you'll be treated. Right. Councillor De Grande. Please start my time, please. Yes. Restart it. From over, from, from the beginning, please. Okay, Councillor De Thank Grande. You. Um, so the motion is uh, on the uh, screen. It could be self-read. Uh, Madam Chair, this is the second time that we're having this debate um, at City Council. Okay. We had this debate in, in the 1970s. And the debate was very similar. If you replace LRT with SRT and subway with subway back in the 70s, Scarborough was looking for a subway extension at that time. And all the arguments that were made, all the arguments that were made then are the similar arguments that have been made today. So we didn't get a subway then. We got a SRT. Well, SRT is, needs to be replaced. And the SRT now that needs to be replaced is going to cause traffic disruption anywhere between two and four years. That's, that's a statement of fact. So, Madam Chair, the only saving grace for that particular line was that it used its own corridor. It used its own corridor that did not interfere with road traffic. That was its only saving grace. Now, Madam Chair, in the uh, 80s, there was also a commitment to provide a subway that went from one, one civic center to another civic center, and it stopped. 
at Don Mills. And so for 30 years, for 30 years, we have been waiting. I moved personally up in that area because I was told a subway was coming. I moved there in 83 that a subway was coming. We've waited 30 years. That has not occurred. In the 30 years that we have waited, Madam Chair, the same argument that Councillor DeBerra makes about sleek and slick and all that kind of stuff, the same argument was made in the 70s. The other big mistake that Council has made is, unlike other world-class cities, we have not developed a program to have a continual, continual addition to our grid. We haven't done that. And every time it's been an issue with respect to money. We didn't take any money out of the tax base. We didn't do anything. We just kept going until we got to a point where the argument again is the same argument in the 70s. Except this time, we got a letter from all the MPPs of Scarborough. Coupled with the other councillors of Scarborough, the majority of councillors, to indicate that this time we did not want to duplicate history by going to the same route, and the same arguments that were made over 30 years ago. And how to finance it, because we haven't done anything. We haven't done any continuous, station by station, incremental improvement to our system. We haven't done that. Madam Chair, this particular motion is a motion to start putting some monies in a coffer, segregated differently than the car registration tax, which went into general revenue. This is as transparent as you can be. It's incremental. It does not add to the debt. Because, Madam Chair, it's not just about Scarborough and the Shepherd Line. It's about all those other priority items that are needed throughout the whole city. So if the argument is that 30 years to get to where we need to be, well, what solution does anybody have with respect to all the things? The relief line I've heard downtown, Councillor McMahon's area. I've heard about the subway in Councillor Mamaliti's area. I've heard about the subway extension in <coughs> Councillor Pasternak's area. So basically what we're saying is we're not going to do anything. One-time money. Let's wait another 30, 40 years. Madam Chair... The motion that I put forward is a motion to say that the monies, in order to complete any project and to get us back into a one-third, one-third, one-third activity with both provincial and federal government, is to leverage the money that we need to come up with in order to complete other projects. So while Councillor De Baramaker looks at it at a, as a hundred million and Councillor Mahevic as well, I look at it at 300 million. I look at it more than because it allows us the opportunity to leverage that money, to work that money any way that the council would like to do in order to advance in order to advance the transportation system in a city that calls itself world class. You heard our new person in the TTC from his experience that the core like major cities around the world, has subways. It is the LRT that supplements it in those areas to bring it into the core. <coughs> Madam Chair, may I have an extension? Extension, please. Recorded vote. Thank you, Councillor Mahavik. Recorded vote. Thank you, uh, Councillor Thank you. Mahavik. You're always uh, a charm. We're in this together, aren't we? Councillor Delcarnley, your vote, please. Councillor Thompson, Councillor Bailao. This is a motion to extend Councillor Delgrande's speaking time. Madam Chair, my time's going, and you're supposed to get a two minute extension. Oh. So you want to start at zero and then add up to two? No, I, it's, um, sorry, I'll give you a few extra seconds. Councillor Mahavik, please. Councillor Mamaliti. Councillor Davis, please. Councillor Crisanti, please. Councillor Delgrande, your vote, please. The motion to extend the speaker's time carries unanimously 34 in favor. Thank you.
So, Madam Chair, I know there's going to be amendments to my motion, and I don't have a problem with that. But fundamentally, fundamentally, we all made a mistake. As elected officials, we all made a mistake. Because a decision like this should have been through a referendum and the question posed on a referendum. We didn't do that. We failed. So here we are between information that's accurate, not accurate, a panel that's not as expertise as in terms of individuals who have expertise in this area. We are in a quagmire. But at least, at least, I'm putting a plan that's good for 100 years. It's good to look at a plan that will address some of the other issues throughout the city. I don't have a problem personally with LRTs. It's just that I would like to see them in their own corridor, not using up roadways. There is a place for them. There's a place for subways. And so, my fellow colleagues, some of you said, show us a plan. Show us the money. I now hold you to your word. I've provided a plan. I've shown you money. Will we now have the double talk to say, well, but, however, oh, yes, but. Okay, your That's what we've been accomplishing. Your time is up. Uh, I did give you, I did give you, you some <laughs> extra seconds there. Okay. We do have questions. Councillor Mehevic. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, motion. Um, are you envisaging then the shepherd to go on a pay-as-you-go basis or a borrow-the-money-up-front basis, build it, and then pay it off as debt? Councillor Mahavik, I personally would like pay-as-you-go and incremental. I, do okay. know, I also do know this, that there are a couple of budgets coming. One of them is a federal budget. Okay? We're a little bit premature, if you ask me, in terms of having this debate because I would have loved to have had this debate after the federal budget because it's my belief, as the pages of the newspaper indicate, that there's an opportunity for the federal government to participate in our transportation plan. Well, you would understand, though, I would imagine, that the federal government with its budget uh, deficit uh, issues uh, would be very reticent to uh, fund uh, any more than the 333 that it has committed to. Okay. You, would under, you would appreciate that we would have difficulty buying that. May I answer? Yeah, of course. When a provincial or federal government put monies into infrastructure, that money multiplies seven times. It's called the multiplier effect. The government, at the end of the day, creates jobs. People that have jobs pay taxes. They pay HST. Companies also pay corporation taxes. That money filters back to them. It doesn't filter to the municipality. It filters to both levels of provincial well, I, and federal government. I appreciate government. the Keynesian argument, but uh, um, I thought that they were in a mode right now of reducing, uh, reducing debt. But my, ma my math says, if you consider, and I'd ask you to respond, it costs about, at the low end, $200 million a kilometer to, buy, to build a subway. At the high end, 350, maybe $400 million a kilometer to, uh, to build a, a subway. At the rate of $100 million a year, that would suggest that over a four-year period, one term of council, what you will get is two kilometers of subway. Your question, Councilor If Mahavik. two kilometers of subway per term, and there's eight kilometers from Don Mills to Scarborough Town Center, it would take us four terms of council, not four years, four terms of council to get from Don Mills to Scarborough Town Center. Never mind ever, ever getting to the ones that you have below the downtown relief line, the waterfront, okay, the Councilor Shepherd Councilor Mahavik, allow Councilor DeGrand to answer the question. Is this really, is this really what Scarborians want? Councilor Mahavik. Uh, Scarborites. Uh, Scarborites. What, I, what I've indicated is that, is that is this fund, which is transparent, which doesn't go into general revenues, can be used to couple with monies from other levels of government. It can be used to leverage with respect to financing. Right now, Councillor Mahavik, once this monies, this $8.4 billion is spent and gone, that's it. So if your argument to me is that we're not going to get to these other things, then we're not going to do it under your plan either. Okay, that was that's the argument. That was the last question. Okay, no, no, that was that. If I can ask the panel members, please, to try to keep it down.
Councillor Cole, questions to Councillor DeGrande. Thank, thank you for the motion, Councillor DeGrande. Uh, just a couple questions about the revenue tool you've cited. Sorry, uh, Lee, I the, can't. The, rev, the revenue tool you've cited in your motion. Right. Um, how much do you envision it would be per parking spot? Uh, I'm not uh, looking. There are going to be some, some amendments that I know that are coming. Okay. Uh, the majority of the revenue would be coming from paid parking spots. Okay. Um, I guess my other question is, would there be a difference between what a downtown spot would pay or a high-density area versus a suburban spot? So, Councillor, what you're asking me now yes. to do is to do the micromanaging work but it's of your the motion. But it's your motion, Councillor. It is my motion. Yeah. That is what I've been told that we can get from this revenue. That's what I've been told. If you want me to do the mechanics, then I can do with less staff. I can then do the mechanics. It's just that we make the policy, the staff follow through so you're, so you're with not the implementation sure, not of sure the policy. The no, it's not, a, it's not okay. that I'm not Thank sure. You. I've been told 90... Councillor, don't mislead my commentary. I said the figure was $90 million provided by staff to me. Okay. Um, when you look at our competitive, competitiveness compared to 905 region, and we're always conscious of that, and want to make sure that businesses are competitive, how do you think this will impact our competitiveness versus the 905? That's a good question, but I'm going to say this to you, Councillor. Metrolinx is also looking for tools, okay? This is one of the tools that they can look at that goes across the GTA. Yeah. If we don't undertake a tool before they use it, because they will, they will come back with something, okay? This is one of those items that we can capture now. So are you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you of the mind then that if Metrolinx is going to do this anyways, that it would be fair and make more sense to do it regionally as opposed just to in Toronto and disadvantage Toronto businesses, say, against their competitors outside of in the 905? Uh, Councillor, there are many things, as you know, in terms of competitiveness that we've addressed, one of them being, for example, bag tax, one of them being with respect to the, uh, the taxation on realty and business. There are all kinds of things. However, as you well know, and a number of members have said, that when you have an educated population with transportation available, that people bear the cost because they get the, the people to be able to come to work and the people that are qualified to work. Now, you mentioned actually in your, in your comments that you, the, the, the downfall of the vehicle registration tax, um, and I think we all agree part of that was it wasn't implemented properly or um, do, you see similar, do you see similar risks with this tax and the reaction we might get by implementing it in this fashion on the floor of council this way and we introduce a tax that's not well received, not well researched, and in fact we end up reversing this a year from now? Uh, but that was your last question. Uh, do you want me to answer mm -hmm. it, Madam Chair? Sure. Okay, if you want to answer. Um, what I see here, uh, Councillor, in terms of having something because I think you were one of the councillors that said, show me the money, show us something. And that would have meant, as you well know, either tax increases, either tolls, you know the, the, the tools, okay? So I've picked one on our behalf. And I've done a lot of work behind the scenes talking to a number of councillors as to what is palatable and what is not palatable. Obviously, there's no incentive for me as a councillor living in Toronto to cripple our businesses. Okay, thank you, Councillor DeGrand. Uh, Councillor McConnell, question. Um, yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm just looking to see. I'm not really. Yes, there we are. Um, I'm so I'm looking at your. Uh, I, I, sorry? I I, I'm having trouble hearing you. Okay, sorry. Can you start my time again? We're having. The Councillor's having some difficulty here. Thank you. You okay now? Yeah, great. Um, so, with regards to a question that I asked um, earlier um, about um, uh, building the subway and the, the length of time that it would take, um, you have asked for it to be completed by 2020. Um, they indicated 2021, but a year or two, whatever, um, and, um, and that you would continue to put that money aside. So, um, $100 million. Uh, from parking lots. So uh, what I want to know is 
given um, that the um, uh, the development industry have indicated that the rapid transit service for the waterfront uh, along Queens Key, which was a half a billion dollars, has to be or yes, has to be done now. Um, wh where within any of these other things, uh, how far off would they be pushed? Because what I'm seeing here, unless I'm misunderstanding it, is that that you're suggesting that they look at the downtown relief, the uh, um, the connection between uh, um, Shepherd, uh, sorry, Young uh, Shepherd Station to University uh, Spadina, uh, the uh, the rapid transit that I talked question, about on the waterfront. I, I'm reading from his list. Yes. Now. Okay. So what yes. is your question? I, I I asked him the question, mm -hmm. and M. sorry, my time. M. So, uh, at the, and uh, the extension to Sh the Sherway Gardens, the line to Pearson, when would we be beginning those and where would we be getting that funding for if you've tied up all of the funding between now and 2020 or 21? Councillor McConnell. Yes. Um, the motion that's there yes. provides for a minimum of $90 million. Yes. On top of that, I have not included, as you well know, there's the opportunity for DCs and the opportunity for TIFs. That's, that's a bare minimum. So I'm being ultra conservative with respect to the funding. And as I've indicated to you, it is my belief and understanding that when we have funds to match federal and provincial funding on our projects, the money is multiplied. It's three times. No, and I do understand and, that. And counselor, and counselor, let me just say I this. I do understand that, but this. I am just... May I, may I answer? I am of concern is particular I, Queen's Key, which has to be done within the next two years counselor. or three years. Okay, counselor McConnell, counselor, allow Councillor like, DeGrunt like to answer, please. Can you... Yes. I'd like to finish. Yes, yeah, sure. How is that any different than you supporting buying streetcars for $1.3 billion. Okay, so that's no, off no, the No, but I, I just want, I want to make so a point I, here. That was your last question. I just want to make a point here, Councillor. We didn't have money to do grand, that. That was your last. No, last question. Councillor McConnell, can you please, can you please, Okay, Councillor DeGrand, don't answer her. She's not, she doesn't have the floor. She's just mouthing off. That's all she's doing. Okay. It's very irritating when I, Councillor McConnell, when I've told you your time is up and you continue to scream. Please, I appreciate some respect. Okay. Okay, okay. point of personal privilege, Councillor McConnell. Speaker, I do understand that I have a loud voice like yours, uh, but I also understand that you equally yell at me, and as a speaker, your position is neutral and to referee here. It is not to take sides. Thank you, Thank Count you. Councillor McConnell, but when I, say you're enough, when I say your time is up, show respect and sit down and don't scream. You have to show respect to this council and to the public. Okay, I'll stop yelling. Okay, our next question is Councillor Matlow to ask Councillor DeGrand a question. Councillor Matlow is not as a, at his seat. Councillor Matlow? Councillor Matlow, are you there? No? Okay. Okay, Councillor Matlow. Okay, you have three minutes, Councillor Matlow. Okay, just one sec. Let me just uh, hold on. I'll start your time over. Just a sec. Um, okay, your mic is on. Um, Councillor De Grande, when did when did you actually come up with this uh, the scheme? When did I come up with it? When when did you come up with with this funding scheme for the subway? I've been working on this uh, for well. It, last week uh, in terms of trying to put something together to address your concern that you wanted to see, show me the money. 
a number of counselors said, show me the money, I show us the plan. No, no, I, I appreciate so that's, that. So that's what I've been doing. No, no, I, no, I, I very doing. much respect that, that, you're, that you're making this effort. Um, why, why was there not something done uh, to uh, propose a funding plan for the Shepherd Corridor su uh, subway uh, 16 months ago or when it was first promised during the election? Uh, why wasn't this brought to a committee where we could actually consider the merit of these arguments? Why is this just being brought now at the 11th hour? Council, I'm very surprised that you would make that comment because in terms of That's the budget, comment, no, no, but, but in terms of the budget, the same, the same question I can ask you. We had a committee. Uh, you had some concerns with the budget. You came after the fact on the floor of council. No, I'm, I'm asking. No, I'm no, asking but I'm, I'm, I'm responding because yeah. for you to for you to make commentary on myself about 16 no, months. No, I'm not. I'm we not. did the budget comment. No. We did the budget no, uh, 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 sir, for over a year. For over a year. With, with, with all due with all due respect, I, I'm not making a but comment. I, I, I really, know, I'm I really, am, I'm, I'm what I what I'm trying to understand. There are a number of of things put together here. Uh, including various popular uh, rapid transit lines like the downtown relief line and others that we would all like. So I understand politically how this, how this is, is seductive. But um, I, I don't understand fully how uh, there's evidence here that this will genuinely end up funding the subway that, that you want. Um, and I also don't see anything in here about planning arguments to support at, uh, asking taxpayers to go further into their pockets for this project rather than other projects. So I'm just I'm trying to understand why wouldn't you bring this to a committee so we could explore those uh, ideas rather than come at the 11th hour with various things put together that don't, at, 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 at first glance, seem to add up into a plan that would substantively support uh, building a subway uh, on, on Shepherd East. Councillor, first of all, I'm not sure what committee you feel this should have been brought to, but the file was not mine. I was under the understanding that uh, the file was with the mayor's office, and the, and the mayor's office indicated that they felt that uh, the environmental assessment had been done in 1998, that Dr. Chong was working on the, on the file. He had a number of revenue tools. It would have been brought to council in a different manner, in a different shape. But what, what happened was council seized the item and decided to move this meeting here and do it now. And so in terms of having the opportunity to check for uh, P3s, having the opportunity to wait for the budgets of both provincial and federal governments, that's why we're here. Is, 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 the, mayor, is the mayor aware? Thank you, Councillor Matlow. Your time has expired. Thank you, Councillor Del Grant. Thank you, Councillor Mamaliti. That's very helpful, Councillor Mamaliti. Councillor Lee to question. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I am uh, reading your uh, revised, and uh, you have a number of revenue tools in here. Have you done uh, consulted with your residents and also the uh, business owners about all these revenue tools that you want to impose on them? Councillor, I've, uh, I've consulted uh, just like yourself in terms of emails and sending out uh, questionnaires and commentary, et cetera, and having, having town hall meetings as well, too. Um, you are well aware, uh, being the councillor next door to me, and knowing some of the same people, uh, those same people have said over and over again that they believe that a subway is the proper thing to do with respect to Shepherd. As a matter of fact, uh, we had discussions that we sh should let the uh, rest of council know we had discussions that you had concerns that the, the line would turn at Kennedy Road, and I incorporated uh, your concerns that it would go to McCowan and go down McCowan, which was the original, original plan of the 1980s with respect to this line. And uh, your non-residential parking levy, does that include uh, parking spots in uh, car dealerships? Uh, at this point, it's, uh, it focuses on paid parking, and as I said, uh, I'm sure Councillor Kelly will be pro uh, providing an amendment uh, with respect to my motion, and I've indicated that if you want to tweak the motion, I've told this to several councillors, I don't have any problems with tweaking the motion uh, to make it more palatable, to have something that we can come to a compromise and move forward. Uh, the, the reason why I'm asking is because uh, when you say $100 million, and uh, I'm just trying to 
be more specific in terms of what kind of parking levy, non-residential. The moment you uh, say non-residential, it means all commercial properties well, is non-residential. So does that mean car dealerships? Uh, does that mean strip malls? When you say paid parking, I mean uh, paid parking, uh, are you just saying what you're paying for now? Because like Scarborough Town Centre, yes, are we receiving uh, feedback that says that they do not want to be taxed? Councillor, um, as, it, as it stands uh, now, um, you know that we have the uh, parking authority. You know that we have uh, uh, Empire. We have uh, all kinds of uh, uh, paid parking throughout the whole city. Okay. And um, uh, again, in terms of uh, those fees, uh, I'm looking at uh, surcharge on those parking fees. It could be, you know, could be a dollar, two dollars, etc., to generate funds that need to be addressed. And that, when you come to park anywhere in Toronto, whether you're from 905 or 513 or wherever you come from, you're going to be subject and you're going to be indirectly paying to support uh, this fund. Okay, Thank you, Councillor Lee. Your time has expired. Councillor Palacio. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Councillor De Grande is, um, we heard over and over again in these council chambers that um, show us the money and then uh, we'll pay attention to what you are offering. So my question to you is, in terms of creating these financial tools as being proposed in your recommendations, do you think that uh, that's feasible, doable, and will that help us to create the world transit system that uh, Toronto desperately needs? Councillor, you know, if, if we're all, you know, trying to do the right thing for Toronto, we know this. We know that we consume $6 billion of lost productivity in the city. That's what we lose. What is the value to try and capture that? Now, I know people would say, well, we need money to do this and parks and pool, all that kind of stuff. But here is a very big item that affects everybody on a day-to-day -day basis, like literally everybody, rich, poor, in between, etc. Six billion dollars, and it hasn't been addressed. The other thing that has not been addressed, Councillor Palacio, as I've said, city fathers here, okay, pilfered away the opportunity to set something aside each and every year, or to at least tunnel each and every year, we didn't do anything for 30 years. And we always have this, this uh, syndrome that we want to be world class simply because we have people from all over the world here. But in order to be world class, you also need to have a world class transportation system. You, when you look at, at, at countries and cities that started after us and where they are today, we should be embarrassed. We should be embarrassed. Thank you. So I'm trying to put some sort of, of long term legacy fund to take us into the future beyond Shepherd. My next question is actually in terms of creating that reserve account in perpetuity to, to build this rapid transit system or subways that you are referring to. Now, with regards to recommendation number four, in terms of uh, levies on parking lots, just for clarification purposes, I, would you also include perhaps as a friendly amendment to, to include all the lands within uh, the, home, the big stores, the Home Depots, the Ronas, which are paying, they are not paying commercial taxes at the moment, where an additional tool in terms of revenues could be implemented. Would you be willing to look no, into sir. it as well? I'm trying to get us to a compromised position on Shepherd, and I'm trying to get us to a compromised position because I believe in a, I believe in a relief line. I believe in, in a number of things that we just don't have the money to do. I'm not, you know, if you want to work with my motion and you want to add to it and stuff, it's the will of council to decide whether that amendment is to carry or not to carry. So uh, it be your amendment. I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not adverse to uh, any kind of changes that you want to make to, to address whatever issue you're, you're after. Thank you, Councillor Palacio. Councillor Berardinetti. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, through you. Um, Councillor Del Grande, uh, as um, 
you were here previously. I was not when the vehicle registration tax was introduced. So is this a targeted tax? You have to define what you mean by targeted. Well, it wasn't an, a broad-based tax revenue source. Well, it would be broad-based because, you know, whoever drives and parks, no matter where you come from, it, it captures everybody. Right. So given that fact, why was the, why was the vehicle registration tax, tax rescinded? What, what was the reason well, why? The, re what was the, the reason for that was that the promise was that that was going to go into public transportation. The monies were collected. No, it wasn't. The monies were collected, and it went into general revenue. Right. And that was one of the things that got people upset, that they were paying double their registration for their vehicles and people in the other areas who were coming into Toronto. Councillor. Can I please, I have the floor. Mr. Chair, Truth. I would like Truth. Councillor Carroll to please take my, 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 my place and answer the question. Easy, Shelley. I, I, I wouldn't tempt her, Councillor Del Grande. <laughs> uh, I think you've made your point. I've stopped your time. Councillor Del Grande, you can continue. No, I actually have a point of privilege. Point of privilege, Councillor Carroll. On a point of privilege, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I too voted for the PVT and, and then voted to eliminate it as per the electorate's wishes. That's but I just uh, uh, have a point of privilege in that it, it's just been intimated that I made the promise as one of the councillors in this chamber that those monies were, be to, were to be committed to public transportation. And that is not true. And on a point of personal privilege, I don't want my own constituents to be misled. Councillor Carroll, that's something of a stretch, but uh, I'll turn the, uh, <laughs> that, the to microphone stretch. back Love to, to Councillor Del Grande. Are we finished? Uh, yeah, we're finished. Floor? We have the floor, thank you. Yeah, you got okay. it. All right. So, Councillor Del Grande, we know that it was meant to go to a specific uh, transit issue or tra transit services it and was. support. We know that. And the public believes that. And it went into General Crawford's. Is that not true, Councillor Del Grande? No, I'm not asking actually. Councillor Carroll. On a point of personal privilege, Mr. Speaker. This had better be a real one, Councillor Carroll. It is, Mr. Speaker. On a point of personal privilege, lest, lest I be misrepresented to the public one more time, Nobody mentioned I would like to Nobody stand down the, the, the inaccurate statement that there was any promise that the PVT would be spent on public transportation, sand it down and have a clerk bring forward the document. Thank you, Councillor Carroll. You've made your point. It's, well, uh, I'm not asking for a ruling on my uh, point. The, the, Will the, that the, comment be stood down the, and, and proven? The, the, my ruling is that that is a point, uh, an interesting potential point of debate. It is not a point of privilege. Councillor Brugnetti. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And again, Councillor uh, Del Grande, we know that it should have gone to Hello. roads or, some, or a specific issue, and that's what was Julia. so appalling to the residents of the City of Toronto, and that's why it was rescinded here at Council. So with this per per specific one, excuse me, Councillor Davis, if I could speak, please. Uh, I'd like to say... I should sit down. I should sit down and let the, let the two... Uh, let I know, but my time's ticking. So I'd like to say that with this revenue tool, the issue is... Have, <laughs> it is a lie. Councillor Peruzza, on what he assures us is a point of order. <laughs> Speaker, I'll tell you, uh, well, it's not really a point of, pro of order. It's a point of privilege, Thanks. actually. A point of privilege, Speaker. We're Let's hear it. My How can they be here speaker, for this long and not know if it's a point of order or a point of privilege? My, my, my privilege, Speaker, um, is, is this. I was here when the vehicle registration tax was introduced. I didn't support it. Your point I, of privilege, The point is this, Speaker, is that you are allowing the questioner to continue to make a point which is not true. Oh, that's the point. That's my, and that's in my privilege. Thank you, Councillor Peruzza. Uh, if we all agreed on everything around here, we wouldn't spend all day talking. Uh, there are, Councillor Peruzza, that is not a point of order. It is not a point of privilege. Councillor Peruzza, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Councillor Peruzza. 
Well, it's absolutely true. You it's are welcome. It's absolutely true, Councillor Perusa. Councillor Perusa. absolutely true. The vehicle registration you tax are, was supposed to go to a specific are, issue to transit and to roads, and that's what it was supposed to go to, and that's why it was so appalling to the residents you, of the City of Toronto. And what I'd like to continue with my line of questioning. Uh, and I would like to give you a chance to do that if everyone else can Councilor just Powell. hold their horses. Okay. Cal Councillor Berard Nettie. Thank you. And uh, maybe, maybe I'll just caution every, any, everyone with tender ears that the questions may touch on areas of disagreement. Uh, and uh, we should get used to that sort of thing around Mr. here. Mr. Chair, point Councilor, of personal Councilor, privilege now. All I'm getting here from the member next to me is we're lying, we're lying, yes, we're lying. That's that, is un, that, is, that, is, that is not language within this chamber. I would ask, I would ask the member to apologize. I would ask the member to please be courteous to allow both myself and the questioner to have the floor as we're entitled to have the floor. I think we can all agree on that. I didn't hear the particular accusation that you're suggesting and I don't propose that we go there. But let's, let's just carry on with the uh, discussion and see if we can do something useful here. Councillor Berardinetti. Thank you. Councillor Del Grande, have you ever found a tax that people love? No, no one wants to pay uh, anything out of their pocket. If they but do you it. think that if a tax was specifically directed towards something particular, like the items that are mentioned in your motion, and especially when it comes to transit in the City of Toronto, the most important issue, bar none, facing this Council today, have you found anything else that would be more important to the citizens of Toronto? No, I, I don't, and I don't understand why councillors who, who have these needs for, with respect to uh, transit, how they could possibly vote against trying to establish a fund in order to move in that particular direction. Even so though many councillors spoke about bringing back the vehicle registration tax, isn't that correct, during the budget process? Yes. And we were both on the budget process as many councillors said that they would vote, in fact, to bring it back. Is that not correct? That's correct. And so now you have a revenue tool, which everybody was asking for, and you've put it forward. And now what is the problem? Uh, it's not, uh, perhaps it's not one of their ideas. Right, correct. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Berardinetti. Councillor Peruzza. First of all, I'd like to start off by actually thanking you for the motion. This is an honest effort to have, to have a, an honest debate finally around subway construction and recognizing that you can't build them with fairy dust, but you actually need money. So thank you very much for that. Uh, that's really important. Uh, I heard earlier, and our staff basically spoke to this, that this would um, uh, equate to roughly about $100 a parking spot for everybody right across the city of Toronto. Isn't that, in fact, correct? Um, if that was... That, our staff said that. Uh, Mr. Weldon said that. Sorry, I didn't hear that. I wasn't in the room at the time, I guess. I okay. So he basically said that what this really means is about $100 a spot. So if you got a little strip plaza, you know, with uh, 50 spots, 50 parking spots, it means a, a, a tax of about $5,000. And... Uh, and it, it reminds me of a very similar tax that was repealed by the provincial government called the commercial concentration tax. It's a $1 per square foot tax. It was already tried in the late 80s, early 90s. There was such a revolt on this particular charge that the government of Ontario of the day had to rip that up and give that back to people because of what it was doing to businesses across Ontario. Are you aware of that? Uh, that this tax has already been done and basically repealed. It lasted two and a half, three years at best. Are you aware of that? Yes, sir. Uh, I am aware of that uh, scenario once upon a time, but I would say this to you. Mm -hmm. If you are opposed to it, then I would be more than willing to hear what you would be prepared, as you've said, to replace your pixie dust, your fairy dust, with greenback. So if you don't like this because you believe it's going to be in a worst-case scenario, 
I'm open to the suggest what suggestion would you like to put forward in terms of an honest debate? Well, here's where, here's where I would like to start with this because we need to, and I, and I, and I appreciate the honest effort here. Uh, so you wouldn't be uh, opposed to a motion uh, that I introduce a motion referring this to staff for A, a report on what its impact would be across the city of Toronto, and B, send it out for a big public consultation f similar to a referendum uh, and have Torontonians engaged on this matter uh, to understand what a uh, hundred dollar per parking spot tax means. This, you say, generates a hundred million bucks? The, the vehicle registration generated 60. This is like double the re vehicle registration tax. You're reintroducing it through the back door. Would you be agreeable to a, to a, a motion that did that? Councilor, Councilor, if you want to hold the debate, this debate, until we get all those answers, I'm more than happy to. But the problem I believe we have is everybody wants an answer right now, today. Everybody wants an answer today. Thank you, Councillor. You want to defer? Caruso? You want to defer this whole thing? Thank you, Councillor. So we're going to. De and thank you, Councillor Del Grande. Councillor Thompson. Councillor Peruzza, you're done. Councillor Thompson. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Through you to Councillor Del Grande. Councillor Del Grande, am I to understand that your motion here seeks to look at a comprehensive? Um, uh, plan that deals with uh, transit in the City of Toronto? Correct. Am I to understand that uh, the $8.4 billion that we're speaking of here today uh, simply looks at funding for uh, Eglinton and uh, Finch and also some uh, portions for, um, for Finch, as for, so for Shepherd, isn't simply the only um, uh, amounts of resources, financial resources are needed. Do we need in excess of $50 billion? Correct. And so in 2006, you were signatory to a document that uh, basically it's titled Replacement of the Scarborough Rapid Transit System. Do you recall that document? Vaguely. Vaguely? Okay. And in that document, we address the issue around the 1992 EA that basically recommended a subway uh, extension from Don Mills and Shepherd to the Scarborough Town Center. Do you rec yes. recall that? Yes. And in that document, there was a recommendation that speaks to the needs for the TTC staff, city staff, to work jointly in order to develop funding strategy to finance the development of subways. Are you aware as to whether or not that work's been done? Well, Councillor, I, I can only assume this. Since we don't have the answer with respect to that issue, I would imagine that the work was not done. Right. So now you have asked, we've asked for the work to be done in, in advance of this debate here today. Now you're asking for it to be done again. Is that correct? In essence. And this would support the questions and a lot of questions that was asked to Dr. Miller today when he said, if the funding formula or the funding mechanism was there, they would obviously have come to a different logical conclusion. Did you hear that answer? Yes, I did. And so today, you're proposing that we look at funding options to facilitate funding for a subway system that the people of Scarborough wants, not necessarily the people of downtown Toronto. Correct. And so you are putting forward a mechanism that looks at providing the financial mechanism to support what is being demanded in Scarborough. Correct. And when Paul Cosgrove was the mayor of Scarborough, he was one of those who fought for a system other than the SRT. You may not be aware of that, but I was one of those kids uh, dropping literature. Then. You were born. But the, the fact of the matter is, uh, Councillor, here we are trying to address an issue that people have said we haven't been able to address. You have a mechanism on the floor through this motion that addresses that. Is that correct? Trying to. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Councillor Fletcher. Um, I don't mean this in any facetious way, uh, Budget oh, Chief, but have you been converted on the road to Damascus about <laughs> taxes? Have I been converted? Yes. I'm a convert, yes. You are a convert. I'm a convert, yes. You're now a convert for uh, 
road tolls, for different types of Sorry? taxes. Your, your convert to raise money through taxes, including uh, any car-related car related taxes? Um, Councillor, I realize, as a citizen of Toronto, born Hard and raised... Hard for me to hear you. I realize, as a citizen of Toronto, born and raised here, that we are woefully behind when it comes to transportation. I also recognize that somebody at the end of the day has to pay for it. And if we want the benefits of a good subway system for your parents, your children, your grandchildren, etc., then we have to dip into our pockets and do it. And when we do it, there will be benefits, maybe not so much for our generation at this point, but certainly for the future generations, to be competitive worldwide. I guess I'm just having some trouble in looking at the uh, April 1st, 2008 report personal vehicle tax, administrative design features and implementation, and the vote on that, where you were a councillor who voted against right. having a vehicle tax right. or the first ability yes. in the City of Toronto to collect taxes from yes. vehicles. Yes. Um, so what are the options that realistically the City does have through the City of Toronto Act to garner extra money? Would you agree with me? It's the land transfer tax in the City of Toronto Act? Booze tax we, we, we in the City those, of... We have those items that yeah, we're looking at. Booze tax, under. which we haven't collected. Billboard tax. And the last being the personal vehicle tax. Those are simply the, still the four that are available to this council to raise money. Okay. Would you agree? They're, they're there, yes. And um, so they are there. Are there any on you this have, you list? Have, you have uh, entertainment tax, you have a booze tax, yes, you've got I the parking, that. you have a vehicle tax, land transfer tax, a road tax, tax on cigarettes, tax on billboard, and a property tax uh, that, that we, yes. we undertake. Yes, thank you. But, um, so you have been converted to raising extra money? Councillor, uh, I'm happy I'm, to know that. I'm, I'm, That's all. all right, thank you're you I'm glad much. you're happy. Good. Okay, good. Glad somebody's happy. You'll vote for it. Thank you. <clears throat> Councillor Cho, questions? Thank you, Madam <laughs> Speaker. Through you, Councillor Mike Del Grande. I don't know whether it's my uh, English ability to comprehend, but uh, when I'm reading, it felt like I was reading a very hypothetical puzzle. Okay. Having said that, number four, that the City Council directed the Rapid Transit Planning Office be funded initially with uh, 10 million, consisting of uh, funds to be sol solicited from the provincial and federal government. So if a federal and provincial government, they refuse to give any money, then automatically the, your proposal Rapid Transit Planning Office uh, will be canceled or do not, uh, does not exist. Sorry, you're right next to me, and I'm having a hard time hearing you, believe it or not. Can you just... I'm just reading your yeah, yeah, motion. Yeah, yeah. So just the last part. What, what the you... last part. If we don't get money from federal and provincial government for, for this funding, yeah. for rapid transit planning office, right. then what's going to happen? There's no planning office? Uh, well, Councillor, um, again, um, transportation is both a federal and provincial... We know, but if they don't give, then what? I understand. But that's why... That's why, in terms of having a self-sustaining fund, gives us options. Number five, uh, you said the uh, non-residential parking levy that would generate up to 100 million. Where does the figure 100 million come from? Um, I got it uh, through staff. Sorry? Got it through staff. How many parking spaces? Oh, I see. So. You said earlier at the beginning of your speech we should have done the referendum. But now you're saying without having referendum, uh, you're making this recommendation. Is the right way to do that? That but much money? Sir, what are the options? We're, we're at this no, I'm asking no, you, we're, not we're at, asking no, me. No, but I mean, we're at this stage. We are at this stage right now. Um, council rushed through the fact that they wanted to have the meeting not only today, but they wanted to have it on the 14th within three weeks. So here we are on the 20th. 21st, quarter to five, here's where we're at. Um, a number of people, uh, including Dr. Chong, asked for the opportunity to have a little bit more time. 
look into uh, other avenues, etc. Council chose not to do that. So how is it that you want me to do a mea culpa when councils determine what okay, they want? I have one more question you don't answer. By placing your motion $100 million, are you suggesting then we're sending shoppers to Markham and Mississauga and Pickering because they don't pay any parking levy? Is this your suggestion? So that we can win the, all the uh, shop owners? Okay, that was your last question. different than your support of the land, of the, uh, land transfer tax and the uh, car registration tax. Okay, thank you. I mean, that you was that argument against me. That was your argument. Uh, Councillor De Grande, that was the last question. Uh, Councillor Lindsay Luby, questions. Thank you very much. Uh, in your uh, non-residential parking levy, does that mean commercial and industrial gets the levy? I just want to be clear. Um, Councillor, um, it's my understanding. I want to be clear too. It's my understanding that in having this as an advance motion circulated, a number of councillors have pointed out certain things in terms of wanting to make it on uh, paid parking. Mm -hmm. um, and again, on paid parking, the surcharge can be whatever you want it to be, a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, on actual paid parking. Oh, you mean a parking lot sort of thing? Yes, yes, on the actual, you pay, you know, mm -hmm. you pay $21 down here now, maybe you pay $25. So you, you generate it that way. And I've said to the councillors who want, who are desperately trying to, A, complete the work on Shepherd, and B, also how do we do the next projects, et cetera, to try and create this fund and this pool. Right. So again, uh, to Councillor Peruzza's point, I put something down. Yeah. I think you were one that was quoted, show me the money. I, I was think. the one. Okay, so I put something there for you. And, and, you to say, are. Okay. and to say to you. So further then about that, and that, thank you for showing me one source for the money. Uh, could you advise then, I remember reading it somewhere in these reports where uh, Michael Williams, who heads up our ECDEV department, said that by instituting certain uh, fees and levies could make us less competitive against our fellow uh, municipalities, and he's very concerned about that. Did you think anything of that, or do you think that's not a valid thing? No, sir. It's valid. I'm not. I'm not. Valid. I'm not. I'm not. But what I want to say is, in terms of, we had the, the car registration tax, which could be the same argument. We had the land transfer tax, the same argument. That didn't stop council from doing that because we were desperate looking for money. Now, what I'm saying is that something with respect to you come downtown, we're already saying we don't want people to drive, you know, use transportation. If you choose to come downtown from Brampton or wherever you come from, you're going to pay for the privilege of coming downtown and helping to contribute to a fund where the subway may even go up to Brampton one day. So it benefits everybody within the I GTA. See. Okay. And can I do one further question, if I can? Our vehicle registration tax did raise $50 million a year. And so that's like half of what you're suggesting $100 million might be. Is that a, an easier route to go? Because now I'm finding people saying, oh, I hated it then, but gee, I wish we still had it. Have you heard that? Councillor, uh, you know what I'm, I'm really waiting to, to look? I heard that in the budget deputations, and I made it a point <coughs> to have on our tax bills this year for people to put into the box their $60. I'm going to be very interested to see all those people that wanted to pay the $60 and where they wanted to direct it to, how much is going to come. So in order to answer your question about how people are willing to whatever, uh, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for those results. Okay, thank you. Quite a long time up here. I need water. I need water. Councillor DiGiorgio, questions? Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. First of all, uh, Councillor Del Grand, thank you very much for your motion. I think it's a, a great first step to, um, to introducing some of the debate that we need to go through in the coming uh, years. Uh, just for clarification purposes, uh, Councillor Del Grand, with respect to number two of your motion, where you're talking about a program of continuous and ongoing expansion of Toronto's rapid transit network 
and your creation of the segregated fund, we're talking about using monies for subway expansion, correct? I'm talking about creating a legacy fund to do what we de what council determines as the priority with respect to transportation in the city. So today it's it's Shepherd, tomorrow it's another. But we're point. talking about subways. We're talking about subways. We are even talking in terms we'll be talking of talking LRTs then as well. LRTs where they're appropriate to be. Okay, so the funds can be used for both. Now, one of the uh, other things that I'm, I'm sensing is that there's a large, uh, let's say, potential disagreement with respect to allocation of funds in this, in this fund if it's created, and that is the question of priority. Which line should go first? And I get the sense, to be brutally honest, that Shepard is not deemed to be a priority relative to some of these other ones. Do you get that same sense? Uh, no, I, I don't get the same sense because before this process started, there were many people that said, including the chair of the TTC, that they wanted to have the mayor fulfill his promise of a subway uh, into Shep uh, along Shepherd for the people of Scarborough. And people, when I've sat here and watched and listened, people said, well, we're not against the mayor, we're not this, it's just that we need this, we need the funding model, et cetera, et cetera. My sense, and I think, as I said, the chair of the TTC was on record to say that they weren't against the mayor so much as they were in terms of, you know, how do we fund it, et cetera, et cetera. Show us a way to do it. Councillor okay. DeGrand, if you can uh, face okay, your well, mic when you uh, – because it's hard to uh, hear. I know. It's hard for me to hear anyway. Yeah. Now, my last question, uh, Councillor DeGrand, just to – a supplementary to my previous question. The fund can only accomplish so much in the short term. And so if we're talking about subways being required, uh, let's say on Shepherd as well as, let's say, the downtown relief line, do you have a sense that by having Scarborough settle for an LRT on an extension of the of, of Shepherd from Don Mills over to the Scarborough Center, that in fact it would create some uh, some funds available for what might need to be a subway extension. Okay, that was your last question. Why not? Yeah. Do you want me to answer that? Uh, yes. No. Do you want to answer? Well. Okay. Uh, answer. Again, Councillor, when you do that, then you're going to bring into TIFs and and DCs. So it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't limit it to that figure, because once you start doing it, then you're now going to introduce TIFs and DCs, which is going to add to the – yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Crisanti, questions? Oh, sorry. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Councillor, I know you're, you're probably getting very tired. You've been asked many questions, so I only have one question. Um, is the intent of your motion – if adopted, also to, um, to send a clear message to the provincial and federal government that we're serious of negotiating this at the table and ensuring that we get their support? I am, and I think, I think the argument, again, uh, as you recall, even on the budget, to get our, to get our finances in good shape, um, to have any kind of credibility with the other levels of government, that we are working diligently to uh, be as efficient as possible. Mm -hmm. um, to partner up where we have the opportunity to partner up, but we don't have the same kind of resources. We don't, we can't tax, we can't collect an HST. That's fairly big dollar items. So, um, again, trying to be a, a full partner. Thank you. That was it. I had one. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Perks, Councillor Lindsay Luby, Councillor Davis, please. Please. Councillor Mamlidi to speak. Uh, Madam Speaker, I have two motions. The first one reads that the uh, City Council requests the federal government to start negotiations immediately with the City of Toronto on funding for the public private. Uh, from the public-private uh, partnership fund to, uh, for subways in the City of Toronto where LRTs are being proposed. And the second motion uh, is an amendment to, to Councillor Grande's motion 
And it, uh, what it does is it basically says uh, it takes away the, uh, um, the residential component on the parking. All right? So that's really what this motion does, and I hope they, that the clerk can put it up. Point of order, Councillor Perks. What is your uh, point of order? On a point of order, if I, if I read Councillor um, Mammoliti's motion correctly, it, it implies a reconsideration of the decisions we made at the previous special council meeting. Yes. Could you put it on the screen? Which is to ask for funding to put subways in where council has uh, approved LRTs. So does, does, would we not require a motion for a reconsideration first? Well, if that's the, uh, the will of uh, the Speaker, I, I'll I appreciate that. that. I'll amend I'm the recording. The I'll amend well, the okay. recording. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm okay. Yes, out of order. Yes, Councillor Perks, let me get Always an interruption when I get up to motion, and I'll rule it at the appropriate time. Thank you. Okay, Councillor uh, Mamley, if you can continue. Yeah, I'll amend it and, and advise the clerk that if that's the case, I'll amend it accordingly. Um, so now we've got, um, as Councillor Peruzza has put it in the past, the fairy dust in front of us. Uh, we have got uh, the show us the money uh, um, uh, scenario, uh, and I would love to see how councillors like uh, Councillor Lindsay Luby uh, who ran on Subway and a platform on Subway in her own community uh, will take these motions and see whether or not she actually votes for them. Uh, certainly, Councillor Matlow, who has very clearly said he wanted a form of revenue to be brought forward. I'd love to see how they're going to vote on this. Uh, Councillor Cole, uh, who has very clearly said, show me the money. Uh, and uh, Councillor Peruzza, who has continually said, uh, up in the Jane and Finch corridor that he represents, uh, that we need the money. He supports subways, but we need the money to be able to build the subway. And so uh, some of us want to take them to task because I don't believe that that's the case. I don't think they're going to vote for the package of money. I think that they want LRTs. And I think that all that's gone on here is nothing but a bunch of yapping hypocritical yapping has gone on here. And so the people at home in Scarborough very clearly take a look at how the councillors vote today because the equation of funding has hit the floor. It's here. The last few months, that's all we've heard is where is it? It's here. And we're voting on them today. And the federal government has a wonderful policy, public-private partnership funds, that is directly related to capital work that's ready to go. We can negotiate that tomorrow. That's how wonderful the fund is. And we don't have to share that fund with anybody if our projects are ready to go. And so when Councillor De Bearmaker stands up and says the shovel's in the ground, that can be funded by the federal public-private partnership fund. This is the first time the motion has hit this floor, and I'm hoping that all of you can support that. For those of you that vote against it, it is very clear. Your agenda is anti-car. You don't want cars on the road. You want to frustrate drivers to the point where they don't take their cars anymore. That's what you want to do. And Councillor Vaughn, you're happy because you've got your subway. Councillor Peruzzo, you've got a subway. So, you know, people, the, the, all those students along that corridor get back and forth and don't have to worry about it, right? The downtown part of this equation is wagging the dog. The suburbs lose out. You're creating you're, 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 this, is, this is what we've got to deal with. What we're doing here is creating a two-tier 
public transportation system. One for one part of the city, which is subways. Get along fast, quick. Let's move to work. Let's go to the airport, from downtown to the airport. And one for the suburbs, which very clearly, in my opinion, is a second-class system. That's what we're creating here. And I'm ashamed of the councillors who represent the suburbs who are voting against subways. That's what you're doing here today. And you call yourselves representation for those that want the subways. Those in Scarborough, shame on you if you don't vote in favor of, the, of these uh, subways. They would yes, yes, okay, they would. recorded vote. Councillor Lee, please. Councillor Bailao, please. Councillor Shiner. This is for the extension. Councillor Lee, please. The motion to extend the speaker's time carries 30 to 1. Thank you. So, <laughs> thank you. So, the, the Scarborough councillors, really, think about it. Think about what election we've gone through and what people have wanted from you. Leadership and subways to those <laughs> corridors. You have your opportunity and you've got your money. If you don't, shame on you. Shame on Councillor Peruzza if he doesn't vote for this package. Jane and Finch, one of the poorest parts of this city, is going to be ignored and is going to, is going to have a second-class transportation system. Why? Because there's an unwillingness to look at a subway, which is which is right at our fingertips. And our representation, Councillor Crisante is in favor of subways. I am as well. Councillor Peruzza, you should be as well. And don't hide behind it. Go to your community and tell them you want a subway. Councilman don't just say it in this particular please. chamber. And subways creates jobs, construction jobs. Where are all those that support the unions here? Laborers want jobs. That's what they want. They want you to support it because it really means hundreds of thousands of man hours in work. And where's that equation in all of this? And finally, and finally, I ask you to reconsider and look at the package at its entirety today and stop the political, the political games that are going on in this chamber today Stop the hypocrisy and look at the money situation as it stands with the motions that are in front of us. And I think together we can work a compromise in here that brings subways to the City of Toronto and not LRTs. Okay, your time's up. Um, Councillor Mamaliti, uh, Councillor Prutz has a question for you. Of course he does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just want to, I just want to, I just want to really understand the, the, the gist of the motion that you're proposing. So uh, as I read it, it, it should be like this. I should support a tax that's double the rate of the vehicle registration tax for all of the people that I represent that own a car or drive a car. So I should support a tax that will, that will hit them uh, for twice as much as what the vehicle registration tax used to hit them for so that you can generate a few bucks as it relates to the subway to build a subway incrementally on Shepherd Avenue over the next 20, 25 years, right? You know, pay as you go, right? On Shepherd Avenue where a subway is not warranted. So that's the nature of your motion. I should do that. So, so your question the is, that, should you do that? Okay, yeah. Councillor Mamaliti, should he do that? <laughs> This Just coming, to be clear, this, okay, this, 
This coming from the councillor who stood up in this chamber a few weeks ago and said, where's the fairy dust? Where is it? Meaning, where's the money? Bring us a package that, in, that talks about how to pay for it. It's in front of you. This from a councillor who goes into the community and says, I support, I, <laughs> here's what he says, I support subways. I no, no, what? I, I moved the motion. No, no. I, I moved the subway. motion. I moved no. the motion on the council floor that supports subways. No, I love subways. Right? He does that. Okay, in the okay, community. okay. He okay. does it up in the Jane and Finch corridor. He goes to communities and he says, "I support subways." Shame, shame. Right? No, and here shame. he'll vote against this, okay. so a subway can't be built. Councillor Mamaliti, please. Okay. I'm not asking him to support a tax. Nope. I'm asking him to support subways in this city, and I'm asking him to stop construction on the most heavily used tractor-trailer corridor in this country and stop chaos from happening ahead of time. That's what I'm asking you to do, Councillor Prusa. Okay. Okay, Speaker. Let me okay, say it. Please. Let me say it clear. Okay, you, have, you just have time for one more question, exactly. a last question. One very quick question. But before okay. I ask the question, I want to preface it by saying I love subways. Oh, good, good. I do. Good. I do. I'm where you need you. them and where you can afford to pay for them without gouging people. Perusa, I love the Spadina Perusa, subway extension. Perusa, your I do. Question, your question, because you only have five seconds. My question uh, to the councillor is this. Given all of that, where in his motion is a Finch Avenue West subway? Okay, that, that's it. For, for all intents and purposes, I think we okay. all agree. Okay, Councillor Mabli, I, I, I think that that question wasn't really in order anyway. No, because he's... Okay, just one sec, just one sec. I have to watch you stretch, Councilor Carroll. You can go ahead. I have to watch you stretch. Speaker, I would like for the court just to answer that question. <laughs> Okay, now that we're in the comedy hour. Um, okay, Councillor Mamaliti, quickly answer the question and then we're, we're done. Councillor Peruzza asked, he insisted. I'll answer the question as quick as I can. I will say to Councillor Peruzza, while there is some difficulty in getting the Finch Corridor uh, a commitment opened up today, I promise you this, Councillor Peruzza, Along that Finch corridor, you're not putting a shovel in that ground without me doing something, without me holding it up, without me doing whatever okay, it takes okay. to support okay. the community. Okay, okay, all right. Okay. Uh, Councillor Fletcher to speak. Pardon? I can't hear what you And Councillor Mamaliti, can you work with the um, Councillor Mamaliti? Can you can Councillor Mamaliti, can you work with staff to reword your motion because the way it, your motion is worded, uh, that it's not appropriate before us. Okay. Work with staff. Okay. Thank you. To speak. Of time, and I think that I heard many of the arguments I'd be making. I'm going to not speak. I'm taking my name off. At this okay, point. thank you. Uh, Councillor Cho. Madam Speaker, my oh. motion is not ready, so I'd okay, like to yeah, speak. Okay, so I'll go to the next person then. Councillor Matlow. Josh. Councillor yes. Matlow. Thank you, Madam Speaker. First of all, I want to thank the, um, 
the expert panel members for uh, the hard work they did, the time they spent doing it. Uh, it was a great contribution to the transit <laughs> debate that we're having today. When I, uh, when I first came to council, I was very clear uh, about my position on Eglinton, but I wasn't as of yet um, decided on what the right transit technology would be for Shepard. So what I did is I started doing my own research. And I compared it to the rhetoric that I heard from those who have advocated for a subway. And what I understand to be true is this. Those who have said that the maintenance costs are greater for LRTs than subways are either mistaken or just giving you misinformation, that it's actually cheaper to maintain LRTs rather than subways. Mm -hmm. As well, the life cycle components. LRT versus subway. An LRT, the car is 30 years. A subway is also 30 years. The track, LRT, 25 years. The subway, 25 years. Signal systems, LRT, 50 years. Subway, 50 years. A number of the arguments that people in Scarborough and across the city are hearing about why a subway makes more sense on this corridor of Shepherd than LRT are just being misinformed. That's based on the evidence that I've seen. Now, I, I appreciate Councillor Del Grande making an effort today to say, listen, let's find uh, revenue tools uh, to uh, fund transit. I appreciate that, and I want to consider revenue tools to fund transit. But I need two things. I need a plan that is both fiscally responsible, but also is evidence-based and considers things such as current and future ridership projections and where there's allowable density. Now, I've raised this here before. I'm not convinced that there is the uh, density, the allowable density, the soft sites along the commercial strip of the Shepherd Corridor based on the evidence that I've seen to support uh, this plan. Um, I'm not convinced that, and also I'm really concerned that there'd be high density needed that would go into the local residential neighborhoods that there really has been no consultation with Scarborough residents about the possibility of 30 to 50 story buildings and that conversation needs to be had. I'd want it for my community if that was under consideration, and I think Scarborough residents deserve that too. I also believe that we need to pick our pro projects based on evidence. There are places, every major city I know does prefer subways in their cores where there is the density that supports them. But major cities like Paris, for example, are building LRTs in their suburban areas. There are cities across the world, over 100 that I've seen, that are doing the same thing. So I don't think it's true to say, you know, subways are always better or LRTs are always better or vice versa. We need to contextualize the discussion. We need to be thoughtful about it and really consider where are we talking about and what are we talking about. Now, I support personally, I think that a, uh, a relief line that would be focused into the core of the city that would support Scarborough and other residents coming into work if they choose to come downtown and going back home makes sense and we need to consider revenue tools for that. I also believe that we need to extend the Eglinton Crosstown to Pearson Airport. We're the only major city in the world that I know of that doesn't have a rapid transit link to their major airport. I also think, and this hasn't been discussed much, and it should, about the current need to deal with uh, good repair and the overcrowding on the Young and University lines that we currently have on the, uh, uh, today. Ultimately, we are about to have a budget discussion soon for 2013. And it just amazes me that, that the very people who, are, who, who wanted to freeze uh, property tax just a couple years ago, who are saying, let's just get rid of the vehicle registration tax, now let's get rid of the land <clears throat> transfer tax, let's get rid of every revenue source we have, all of a sudden, there's something they want, and let's just think of every possible tax we've ever you know, heard of. Let's, just, let's do this well, let's do this maturely, let's actually think this out before we just start uh, asking taxpayers to reach deeper in their pockets. I don't mind doing that if it makes sense, but I've got to justify to the taxpayer who I request that from. 
Ultimately, please support the panel's recommendations. They have evidence behind them. I haven't seen any other plan today that does. You need an extension. Oh, sure, okay. yes. You want an extension? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Re recorded vote. I know. Excellent. You I know. should have just sat no, down on it. Yes. Councillor Mamaliti, Councillor Mallow didn't make a motion, so you got your name up there. I was going to ask him about that fee he wanted to charge yeah. all the people. Okay, Councillor Mamaliti, it's not in order. He didn't move a motion. I was going to ask him that question. Maybe if I want to talk about it. Maybe you can ask him that question offline. Okay, Councillor Ford, Councillor Mamaliti. Councillor Wong Tam, please. Councillor Peruzza. Councillor Lee, please. Councillor Ford, please. The motion to extend the speaker's time carries unanimously, 24 in favor. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, I, I just wanted to add uh, two or three more points. One is, um, I said long ago that I would be very open to hearing a realistic, evidence-based, and fiscally responsible transit plan from the mayor. Thus far, I believe it's factual to say that not one has been presented to Council for our consideration. Number two, the plan that Mike Del Grande, Councillor Del Grande, has suggested has some merit. In other words, we should be looking at revenue tools. I just don't believe that that revenue tool should be connected to the project that's desired by, by him. But I appreciate him opening up that discussion. I hope that over the next uh, several years we'll have that conversation. I remind you all that Metrolinx will be uh, yes. bringing some uh, 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 revenue tools uh, uh, to us in 2013. But we shouldn't wait for that. I believe that we should start work now on building plans so that unlike, with all due respect, the mayor, we don't just sort of do things like we say we want something and then we figure out how to do it at the 11th hour, but we actually plan for it and we put together a substantive business case that we can justify and argue uh, so that our residents may, in their own wisdom, want to pay for it. Lastly, I remind us all, no matter what you want to come out of today, we're going to leave this room, hopefully at the end of today, knowing that we had a very passionate and important debate about expanding transit for the first time in a generation in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a system way for Toronto. And, and I think this is something that we all should be able to celebrate. So I'm glad that we've done this. Your time's up. Councillor Cho to speak. I'm sorry, I will wait until uh, I get my motion done. I'm sorry. I thought it was done. His motion is not done yet? Can I get your no? Councillor Lee. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm standing up and uh, I'm going to uh, say that uh, in the last term of council, when uh, the Transit City came forward, I had asked a lot of questions as well. I said, why not a subway along uh, Shepherd as opposed to an LRT? And uh, I had a meeting with the uh, Councillor Jambroni, the TTC chair at that time, and also many other people, and he explained to me that uh, we didn't have the money for a subway, but uh, there was enough money for an LRT. So at that point in time, I we made a lot of inquiries, and in the end, I worked with the BIA, TTC, and Metrolinx to ensure that there was at least amount of impact on people that live along Shepherd, even in construction. After, finish, after the construction is finished, I don't think it makes much difference. There will be minor impacts because based on what <coughs> was done on the St. Clair, but I went down and traveled St. Clair to see what the issues were. I spoke to uh, different businesses, and many of them say that after the construction, uh, it really did not matter much anymore. Okay, it was during the construction that uh, there was impact. So anyways, <clears throat> there's the history of it. And uh, during the election, 
To me, it wasn't an election issue, so I did not fight it not based on that. However, when I went knocking on doors, people did tell me very clearly they wanted no tax increase. All right? Very, very, very clearly. Now, so all along, I've been going along, and the uh, mayor came along and says, cancel Kansas City. So everything was canceled, and uh, things were put on hold for a year. Now, recently, after the uh, February 8th uh, meeting, when I meet with residents, they come up to me and tell me, you know, please build a subway. So maybe I need to uh, re-double-check the assumptions I had made previously that people, most people, would support an LRT. Because when I first ran my first survey back in uh, 2008, I had 26 responses. 21 says, go ahead with the LRT. Three said, please wait for subway. Two says, don't do anything. Just keep it the way it is. All right? So I ran another survey. And uh, again, some people say, why so late? But, un but you have to, like on any project, verify the assumptions. Verify things that you said that, you know, make sure that people have not changed their minds. So I have, including two that just came in, 50 responses. Okay, and it's 50 50. 25 says they want subways, 25 says LRT. And on the 25 that want subway, I also asked further, you know, we don't have funds, so we need to have revenue sources. On parking sales tax, parking uh, space levies, sorry, uh, nine of the respondents that wanted subway did not answer as to what kind of taxes they saw increasing, or a couple of them said, no tax increase, please. Of that, one person strongly uh, agreed with uh, imposing parking levies. Seven agreed. Four strongly disagreed. Increasing property taxes. Five strongly agreed. Eight agreed. Two strongly disagreed. The most of the other taxes people did not agree with. Until you come to uh, allow developers to build higher, hi, uh, higher density, 30 stories or more, and uh, 11 uh, were strongly supporting or agreed uh, to agree with it. So when it comes to raising taxes, people are not willing to do it. But that's what we need to build subways. So in order to support the majority of my residents, I have to now back the LRT because there is no revenue sources to build a shepherd subway. So I'm trying to represent my residents as best as I can. Thank you. <coughs>
They're not, they're not building it uh, to get into a market or for their pr company prestige. They are building it for a very set, guaranteed, stable rate of return. Now, with the revenue tools that we have outlined, that is not enough for a private sector developer to build this transit. What they would want from us, in pure and simple terms, is a subsidy above and beyond what we have identified. And we have not been able to say where that subsidy comes from. We've made steps. Uh, again, I, I credit Councillor Del Grand for recognizing that and saying that we have to start addressing sustainable funding. But it's like, I can only liken it to, if you can fix your basement on your, your own, you're still going to pay for it. You can also get someone, an expert, to fix your basement. You still have to pay that guy to fix your basement. So even if the private sector develops transit, which we should look at that model, it's worked in other jurisdictions, we should partner with them, it would allow us to build more transit more quickly, it doesn't deny the fact that you have to pay them to do that, and in most or every case, you have to debt finance it still to do it. And I was lectured for about an hour in this spot during the budget debate and was told that our debt is, a, is crushing, it is a threat to the city, and we cannot add to that debt. We cannot add to property tax, we cannot add to debt to fund what I think are very basic programs in this city. And many of the people who are suggesting these increases now were the same that wagged their finger at me when we discussed the equivalent less than $15 million going into essential services and we were told that was financial ruin we'd be sending the city into. Yet now, we'll be quite comfortable raising taxes and levies to pay for a $10 million study. So somewhere, the message isn't jiving. So what I'd say is that, yes, we have a tough de decision to make. And this is a healthy conversation that's begun. We have to look at alternative procurement models. We have to continue to look at that, alternative financing, and we will regardless, and it has to be regardless of whatever mode decision we make today for Shepherd. We have to have those discussions. But at the same time, you can't have it both ways. We have, we're going to have another budget cycle coming up soon too. And I'm going to guess the same people that are suggesting that we can raise revenues and taxes this way are going to say the same thing they did to me last budget and say we can't afford this stuff. We can increase taxes. We can increase levies. We can increase these things. So we've got to get consistent on this, but I, I welcome that we've introduced the debate. I give credit to the, the, the budget chief. I give credit for the, to the mayor for going to a place where I know it's not his natural comfort level and comfort zone to talk about these issues. It's a conversation that we skirt around far too often, and it's one that we're going to have to hold the province to account on when their financial strategy comes in 2013 and enforce that you know, something like a parking tax has to be regional. It can't just be at the, on the backs of Torontonians. Because guess what? 905ers use our subway too. They, the odd time. So for all you people who are having trouble getting on the subway now, that's only going to get worse. So we have to have that discussion. We have to push. And we have to make a decision today on what the best mode for Shepherd is. Thank you. Is Councillor Cho's motion ready yet? Councillor Kelly to speak. Thank you, Speaker. Motion B uh, is the motion that um, I'm going to ask uh, the clerk's department to put on the screen. Did I? This uh, recommends approving uh, construction of the subway from the Don Mills Station to uh, Victoria Park using the available funding. And because rapid bus, bus service performs roughly the same job as uh, LRT in terms of speed and uh, carrying capacity, that the TTC Commission report back on the requirements to construct and operate a rapid bus system on Shepherd Avenue that otherwise would have been covered by an LRT. I'm requesting the Budget Committee to consider and advise City Council on the future funding of rapid transit projects and the Economic Development Committee to consider and advise City Council on the future economic benefits of rapid transit projects. Speaker, uh, as energetic as I was at the beginning of this debate, um, 
I'm, I've, I'm now quieting down, uh, and I want to give you the benefit of, of uh, the years that I've spent in the service of the residents and the communities of Scarborough Agent Court. I've served as a Metro Councillor. In fact, there are four of us who actually voted for a Shepherd Subway. Myself, then Mayor Nunziata, Deputy Mayor Holliday, and intriguingly, Councillor Raymond Cho. So I'm only asking for what the Metropolitan Government voted for back in uh, 1996. Nice. So I served as a Metro Councillor uh, Speaker. I've served on two, T two TTC commissions. I'm the former chair of the city's planning committee. I served for four years on Metrolinx, the Metrolinx board, and I served on the Greater Toronto Services Board as well. And I have to tell you, Speaker, at times we sound like squabbling accountants. You know, we're, we're reducing everything to numbers. Numbers of riders, numbers of kilometers, operating costs, capital costs. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you how I see it from my perspective. I know that in this open world of ours, with fewer and fewer boundaries uh, between countries with respect to trade, that we are now living in a fiercely competitive world that is only going to get more competitive as time goes on. And we have to do everything we can, ladies and gentlemen, to make sure that we maximize every advantage that we have as residents of Toronto, especially as its government. Speaker, I know over the years, as a result of the experience I've had, I feel in my gut that we must have a subway network as the foundation of economic growth in the city of Toronto. You are not serving through the, uh, these motions the immediate present situation in Scarborough. Scarborough, as we speak, is being transformed. We are preparing in Scarborough for a higher density future, and we're asking this council to cooperate with us. And in cooperating with us, you will be building the model that will serve the rest of the city as we come to uh, fund and finance the other rapid transit lines that must be out there. So, Speaker, very briefly, my gut says we must vote for a subway future. My head reaches the same conclusion. And I plead with you, I plead with you not to ignore this rare opportunity to take advantage of the situation that is, of the promise that's being presented to you today. I'm one of the few that took Latin in high school, and of the Latin phrases that I still remember, uh, do you one want, of them... Do you want an extension? Would that be at two brute? Recorded vote. And one liberal to another. Yes, it is. Uh, Councillor Kelly, your vote, please. Councillor Berard Nettie. Councillor Pasternak, please. Councillor Cole, please, and Councillor Mahevic. <coughs> the Motion to extend the speaker's time carries unanimously 29 in favor. Thank you. Speaker, be men and women, be counselors of vision. Carpe diem, seize the day.
Okay. Um, Councillor DiGiorgio has a question for you. Uh, no, Frank. Yeah, Frank. just very quickly. No, uh, uh, Councillor Kelly, you know that uh, I share the sentiments that, that you uh, have with respect to the value of, <coughs> of subways being constructed in the longer term. But my question to you is, if, in fact, we make a decision that an LRT goes in on, um, on Shepherd today, and with the upcoming official plan review, uh, you've indicated that Scarborough is planning on higher densities in the future. The reality might be that if LRTs are accepted, that under the official plan review, you're going to be limited to the densities that we actually allocate along Shepherd Avenue. Are you fearful of that? Well, you're not going to get the transit support for the higher densities that we're anticipating and planning for in Scarborough. Right. So, if uh, And so going... all I'm saying to people is that although you may look at Scarborough as a suburb, you're looking at Scarborough from the past. You're not looking at it as we're trying to do from the future. And if you want those densities, if you want that economic vibrancy that we're all anticipating for that part of Scarborough, which will have the highest growth rate in the city over the next 20 years, in order to serve it, in order to maximize it, you have to have a subway. It's as simple as that. So you're, so you're, you're right. with me that, in fact, you're not likely to get the densities uh, if, in fact, the LRT goes in. And the economic Benefit. vibrancy if you don't go the subway route. Yes. Thank you. Councillor Bertinetti. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Councillor Kelly, for the, for the first, uh, for the motion that you moved, item number one, uh, so you are requesting that the, the current funding from the province and federally be directed towards two subway stops. That's correct. The, when you're, if you're looking at the LRT option, you're going to go underground from Don Mills Station almost to Victoria Park anyway. And underground LRT tunneling is far more expensive than subway tunneling. So all you have to do is extend that tunnel at a cheaper cost over to Victoria Park. Okay, and so at that point, that's during phase that, one. Phase one, correct. So, what would happen during that phase? With what would we look at in terms of revenue tools during that phase? Well, the source of revenue would be the the uh, money that is identified here, the provincial contribution and the federal contribution. There will be no impact on the tax rate. We're not asking taxpayers uh, of any sort, commercial or residential, to pay for that extension. Okay, and so what are you requesting the Budget Committee to do during that time then, during that phase? Well, I'm asking the TTC, while that line is being constructed, to recommend the, 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 uh, the way in which a rapid transit bus system using the middle lanes, how that could be implemented, the costs, and the, uh, the, the technical considerations of it. Because if you look at the data, you'll find that rapid bus transit carries as many passengers as LRT without any physical intrusion into the neighborhood, uh, responds quicker to, uh, to uh, demand surges, and uh, is more easily taken into, for example, and up to the Malvern Town Centre. And that would form an interim mm -hmm. uh, transit system to feed the uh, subway station at Victoria Park. And the Budget Committee would be entrusted with looking at funding and financial options that would build out the balance of the line and all the other lines that we have to build as well in the Economic Development Committee, because at heart, this really is a debate about the economic future of Toronto. The Economic Development Committee would look at the economic uplifts of subway construction and would recommend how we utilize them
to reinforce the job creation plan and program of the City of Toronto and the funding system that, that uh, the Budget Committee would be looking at as well. That was your last question. Um, Councillor Lindsay Luby. Thank you. Uh, as a student of Latin myself, I'm sure you will understand the phrase caveat emptor. <laughs> and carrying on in that vein, then perhaps your motion here, we'd be buying a pig in the poke because to go to a rapid bus line uh, would actually take out a, a lane of traffic. Is that correct? It's my understanding that you would run it on a, on a dedicated uh, laneway uh, in the middle of the road, but it wouldn't be on a raised platform. The bus? Yeah. The bus but all the, all, the, all, the, all the details of this mm -hmm. would be reported back to us from the TTC. I see. And, and so for people to get to the bus, of course, it will be the same kind of problems as getting to the LRT if it was in the middle and, and all of those structures would have to be made. Is that correct? This, this is considered by the residents of Scarborough as a legitimate use of Shepherd Avenue between now and the final implementation of a subway system. And could you just comment, I've read somewhere in here, about accessibility and how with the LRT uh, you can directly go on with scooters and with, you know, strollers and all of those things so it meets the needs of young and old, whereas with a bus, even an, a low floor bus, you still have to, you know, do some lifting to get up. Uh, which do you think is easier for those kind of people? Well, I'm looking... We have worked very hard on the TTC. As I, ser as I said earlier, I've served on two commissions. Mm -hmm. We've worked very hard to make our buses user-friendly. Yes. Uh, and that's among the questions that we would ask the commission to report back on. But so rapid bus systems are in widespread use across North America. They work very well. They give you an LRT hit at, cons at a considerably lower price. I see. But so still... lower price to implement, lower price to operate, more flexible in their scheduling, and less impact on the community. That is the way the residents of that part of Toronto would like us to go as we begin looking at the modeling and economics of introducing a subway system across the city. Shepherd Avenue is the door through which I'm asking you to travel to a subway future for Scarborough and through that, the balance of the city. Okay, my time is up anyway. Okay. Councillor Palacio to speak. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I will not support uh, the panel's recommendations. I will uh, support um, the budget, budget chief's recommendations as well as uh, the recommendations that were put forward by my esteemed colleague, uh, Councillor Kelly and uh, Councillor Mamoliri. Let's not forget um, that uh, the young subway is um, 63 years old. 63 years ago, Young Street was much less developed as it is today. 63 years from now, the Shepherd Corridor will be considerably more developed than what it is today. Certainly, when the Young and Blue subway lines were debated, for the same reasons that we are debating them today, one of the key questions probably was how we're going to pay for it. Where are the financial tools? Some of the recommendations are, that are before us are showing us those tools. By then, 
those members of council, that city council had a vision, had the intestinal fortitude to make the big move. They had the desire of leaving a legacy for future generations. Today, we are all benefiting from that bold move. A bold move that brought life, vitality, and prosperity, not only to those transit lines, but to all the neighborhoods around. Members of Council, what we need today is to find a common ground, to put those personal egos aside, to put that, those personal interests aside, and to put the interests of this great city in front of us, because that's the legacy that we're going to leave for tomorrow. What we need to do is what those brave souls 63 years ago did when Young Street was established. To have meaningful discussions on how to do it. Of course, the big debate has been, where is the money? Show us the money. There is some discussions in terms of how we can create a reserve account in perpetuity for rapid transit. And that's something that we should think very carefully because that's the way to go. A world-class city, my friends, should have a world-class transit system. That one connects with people, with jobs, homes, families, recreation, and so forth. Mayor Ford, he wants to build a world-class transit system for everyone, regardless of where people live. And I think that's something great, that's something noble, and that's, and that's been felt all across the city. Poll after poll is showing, yes, our communities all throughout support that. What we need to create is a great transit system, a great city. A transit system that's going to last for the next 100 years, not just for another 20 years. Let's not forget about, in terms of, I, I'm a great supporter of subways and LRTs wherever possible. But let's not forget that subways travel as twice as fast as streetcars or any other transit uh, vehicles. Councillor Palazzi, would you like an extension? Please. Recorded vote. Councillor Layton, please. Councillor Carroll. Councillor Perks, when you're seated, please. Councillor Casanti, please. The motion to extend the speaking time carries unanimously 25 in favor. Thank you, my friends. As I was saying in terms of subways, what people need is a reliable transit system where people can get from one point to the next and to arrive on time. That's extremely important. And if that happens all throughout the city, the better. Subways function underground and don't require closures and lane 
restrictions as it opens, happens in uh, wherever we have exclusive right of ways of LRTs. It moves more people. It's better for the environment. It's a safer system. And in, in the long term, it will save us money. I hope that um, we learn from the, some of the monumental mistakes from the past. St. Clair was supposed to be the prototype transit project ever conceived that was going to be the key in terms of having LRTs all throughout the city and through North America. It was supposed to be a cost-effective system and built on time. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. What we have there, as you all know, is we have a system that's very congested and with a tremendous level of gridlock, with tremendous environmental effects that it's affecting communities at large, traffic infiltration, that's not a secret, my friends. The cost of commuting, if you happen to be in that area, you will see that there is a tremendous economic losses for, local, for our local economy okay, and Councilor for all Palazzo, of us. Councilor your time's up. Sorry, thank you. Uh, Councilor De Grande, I understand that you want to make an amendment uh, to your, revise your motion. Uh, Madam Chair, the uh, city manager uh, who helped me prepare the motion <clears throat> indicated there was a technical adjustment that needed to be done. And so uh, I just bring it to your attention that uh, it's very minor. You, okay. If you want it read or whatever, I'm sure. Okay, and so the clerk will circulate it. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cho. Thank, thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for your patience. I have two <coughs> motions. The first one is uh, the City Council requests that in addition to the currently committed funding, the federal and provincial governments provide funding for the following projects. A, the extension of SLT conversion from Shepherd Avenue East to Melbourne Town Center. B, the extension of the Melbourne uh, LRT to University of Toronto Scarborough Campus. Number two, the City Council directs the City Manager to report to the October 2nd, 2012 City Council meeting on the on results of the above request. Uh, motion B is the City Council requests the City Manager to report to the October 2nd, 2012 City Council meeting on the feasibility of establishing a Toronto Transit Infrastructure Reserve Fund. Before I speak on my motion, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank profoundly uh, to the, uh, the members of our expert panel. And uh, they have uh, done a marvelous job, and there is a real sacrifice uh, out of uh, their love of Toronto and Torontonians, as i like to mention again. Yeah, Madam Speaker, initially, I was uh, strongly supporting survey myself. And uh, my uh, support uh, based on, I guess, my uh, uh, school of biased uh, information. Originally, I'm from South Korea. I came to the best country in the world, Canada, 45 years ago. In Seoul, Korea, each time I visit, they always visit, so, uh, build a survey. Every two, three years, they have a new lines. And how come we can build a survey? Last 30 years or so, the city of Toronto, we only built 14 kilometers of survey. You know? So that was uh, my argument. Plus, that when I heard that the candidate for mayor, Ralph Ford, said, you know, you don't have to pay more tax. There's no roll toll. You get the free subway. I'll bring the, all the developers and development and the survey will build. So I say, hey, this is the way to go, and I support it. But now it's altogether a different story. And that is why I'm changing my vote from survey to LRT, and why? First of all, we don't have any capital budget to build the survey, even to 
Scarborough Town Center on Shepherd to Kennedy to Scarborough Town Center, and we don't have money. It cost around uh, $3.5 billion, around two point, I mean, 3.2, 3.7, so I figure around $3.5 billion. We don't have a capital budget to build. Second, we don't have money to operate budget, you know? If I could only pay, uh, afford to pay uh, by a bicycle, and then, oh, in the long term, uh, it's better to drive a Mercedes-Benz and just to buy it and sign it, and I, I lose my house, I don't think it's a responsible way to buy a, a survey. Yeah. And we heard that the TTC staff mentioning, when you run the LLT all the way to Colon, it comes to my word, and then a uh, survey to Mel uh, Scarborough Town Center, the operating cost annually at least $5 million. Who pays $5 million? The last thing is we don't have a ridership. If we had a ridership, we really fight for, for the subway. But uh, you know they uh, the fired the chief general manager, the former <coughs> chief general manager, TTC, said we could use LRT up until 2050, approximately 40 more years. So when we don't have a ridership, why bother building it? And then just to keep paying? You know, uh, I think uh, Councillor Glenn uh, the mayor maker mentioned earlier, I read the article written by former councillor, for former budget chair, uh, David Sakanaki, and he said the title was Suburbs Don't Need Subway. And Scarborough deserves better than Subway? and he was referring to LRT. He's a conservative member. I have a lot of respect. I worked together at the Metro Council. He was a budget chief. And he says, better way for suburb is not subway, but LRT. Councillor Cho, do you need an extension? Yes, th thank you. Quite thank a you. Vote. Councillor uh, Perks, please. Councillor Perks, your vote. <laughs> Councillor Layton, please. <laughs> Councillor Thompson. Thank you. The motion to extend the time carries unanimously 24 in favor. Yes, uh, I, I'm moving this uh, recommendation uh, seeking uh, additional funding from federal and provincial government. You know, uh, only a few days ago I read an article by a uh, Deputy Minister of Defense Julio Sofantino said, we have $9 billion plus the $1 billion contingency fund to buy 65 F-35 jets. Which country will attack Canada from the air? If anybody attack, you know, it's a terrorist, you know? Each year, According to Board of Trade report, we are <coughs> losing $6 billion in our productivity because of traffic jam and pollution. You know, the worst enemy of Canada and USA that will <coughs> attack this North America is not China or Russia, but it's global warming and climate change. If I were Minister of Defense or minister, Prime Minister, I will give $6 billion to the city of Toronto so that we could save this city. This is the economic engine of Canada. We have to make the right plan. You know, let's continue to big move 
Let's ask for $4 billion from the provincial government. You know, all the MPP from Scarborough, they say, Subway, good, give us the money. Don't play lip service, okay? We have to be responsible and accountable. And that is why I'm changing my position all for the LRT Scarborough. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I Thank you. Um, Councillor Cho, you have a question uh, for you? There's a question for you. Uh, Councillor Cho, you, you were mentioning that streetcars are going to be around for, for 50 years. Where's your calculation on capacity on Shepherd? So, okay, we're not talking about streetcar. That mention was uh, that the uh, yeah, statement was made by Councillor Joshi Matlo, but we're not talking about this streetcar. Uh, I'm glad that you're asking that question. One day, very recently, I met uh, one Chinese Canadian. He said he was in Spain. He rode the LRT there. LRT is not a streetcar. It's top class. Well, thank so you for mentioning to... Spain. Spain has more subway systems than pretty well any outside of Beijing and that area, anywhere in the world. And guess, guess what, Councillor Cho? Guess, how, just, guess the cost that they build their subway tunnels over there. They're the best tunneling experts in the world. That's my first question. What is the cost? I'm sorry, what's, what's the What is the cost to build tunnels in Spain? I don't, I don't what's know. Count? It's 90. We're, we're, uh, Madam Speaker. Hold on. We're not talking about cost of building Councillor Ford, that question is not in okay. order. I mean. My point. Besides, Madam, Madam Speaker. Okay, okay hold on, hold on. I, I, didn't, I, I didn't think that, that, okay. that was that hilarious. But anyways, my point. Okay, hold on, hold on. Councillor Ford, hold on. Yeah, question of hold clarification on. of hold the on. motion. So in Spain, it's uh, not. Hold on. Councillor Ford, I got your time. And Councillor Davis, I do not need your help. Okay. Thank you. So just if everyone's quiet, we can proceed. I, I'm okay. glad you mentioned Spain. They okay, Councillor Ford, don't, please, if you have a question, I put your time on stop, ask the question to Councillor Cho on clarification of his motion. Thank you. Okay, I won't, I won't tell the world that they build tunnels for 90 million a kilometer. I'll ask you another question about capacity then. And we, we build tunnels around here for 400 million. Okay. So the capacity, when the capacity reaches... It's, it's, it's total capacity in 2030. That's what the TTC is saying. Shepherd is going to reach its capacity in 2030. Well, let me finish my question. It's going to take, what, seven, eight years to build the system. We're in 2012. So in 10 years after building the system, we will have to tear it up, Councillor Cho? No. Your question. I'm, I'm not, that is the question. Are we going to be tearing it up? No. Well, let me, let me tell you facts, okay. Councillor Cho. 17 million people is total capacity. Councillor Ford, okay, hold on. Councillor Ford, please ask the question for clarification of the motion. Okay, Councillor DeBerma, it doesn't help when you're screaming in the background. 17 million people, the capacity on a streetcar in Shepherd, okay? And that capacity will hit in 2030. There's 27 million people for a subway. Are you going to tear the streetcar line up, Councillor Cho? Madam or are you going to put the subway in and Madam do it right? Speaker, okay, Councillor Ford, allow Councillor Cho to answer. Okay, first of all, uh, Councillor Doug uh, Ford, you should not twist my, uh, my motion. I never ever said that we should build the street cars. They're two different things. Why do why you keep calling street cars? You have some English language problem like me? <laughs> Excellent. That was a good one, Councillor. Thank you. Now, now, if I said that to you, I'd be a racist, right? Oh. Right? Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, it'd be, it's a double standard. Okay, 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 double enough. Standard. I think that we've had enough questions. Okay. Enough questions. That's it. Councillor Cho. Councillor Kelly has a question for you. Um. Councillor Cho, I, I agree with you. The LRT cars are not street cars. That's correct. You're absolutely correct. Thank you. Now, you brought up Madrid. I was there as the chair of the city's planning committee. I spent 10 days uh, touring the city and its immediate environment. Do you know or did the person, one of your constituents who was talking with you about his or her experience there, did they tell you that the LRTs are run in the what's the equivalent of the GTA and not the city. 
Did he tell you that? That in the city itself, Madrid proper, it's subways. Did he tell you that? Do you, do you know that? So the, he, didn't, he didn't explain all these things. But now, now but you're uh, aware of We're the, talking about Scarborough at the present okay, time. Stop. It's a suburb. But you're now aware of the fact that uh, if you go to Madrid and you travel on a, uh, an He's LRT, you'll be traveling in the equivalent of our 905 area. You'll be traveling on an LRT in Markham, Mississauga, Pickering, Ajax, but in the, the city proper, it's subways. You're now aware of that, is that correct? Okay, what I'm saying, Councillor Kelly, we need a rapid transit Councilor now, Cho, the question, not 20 years Councilor from Cho, now. Councillor Cho, Cho, hold on. The question was asked to you, are you aware of that? No. That, was not that that's happening now. Okay. That was not clarification. He well, didn't answer the question. He the didn't ask me anything Carol, about please. my question. The question was asked if he was aware of it. He wants. Yeah. Okay, that's my answer. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, en enough. Enough. That's it. Um, Councillor Pasternak, question to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I do have a motion which I would ask the uh, clerk's office to, to put on the screen. Uh, one thing we're trying to determine uh, for, uh, for the North York Relief Line, uh, also known as the Shepherd Subway West, is whether we can uh, use uh, environmental assessments uh, that were, were done some years ago, uh, whether we can do an incremental update, whether we can use them to build a subway, whether we can do uh, an incremental update, and if not, uh, to bring forward a, a proposal going forward so that we can commence an environmental assessment along that, along that stretch. In general, I, I would like to thank the advisory uh, uh, panel for all the work they've done on this file. I, I, uh, I, I don't agree with, with a lot of the recommendations, uh, but I do uh, commend them for the hard work in such a short, short period of time. On February the 8th, I uh, actually supported uh, two strategies of at-grade uh, LRT. Uh, one was along uh, Finch West, and the other one was east of Laird along Eglinton. Because it was my view that no city can really rely on one form of transit strategy, on one form of technology. And when I walked into that meeting, I was doing so on the basis that we would support a LRT in certain areas of the city where it was appropriate, where it would work, where there weren't transit solutions, but that we would never close the door on subway building. Today we reach a, 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 a point where we are on the verge of putting a dagger into subway building. And I can tell you, once subway building comes to an end, it could be 10 or 15 years before you revitalize it. We will be finished building our subway, our, our, the current subway system that's, that's being built now in 2015 in Vaughan. It is vital for us to have a subway project that kicks in around that time because we all know what happens when a subway, uh, a subway construction is stopped, when the boring uh, equipment gets sold or parceled off, when the engineers and, and, and technology people go on to other projects, when our suppliers take contracts in other cities, it could be 10, 15 years before we revive our, our, uh, our subway building again. So I, I give you a word of caution that it is vital that we have a subway project in line uh, and digging by 2015. The other thing I want to point out, that Shepherd is not Finch West, Shepherd is not Eglinton East. We have already invested a billion dollars into Shepherd, from Young and Shepherd over to Don Mills. We've also invested another two and a half billion with our provincial and federal counterparts to move up from Downsview Station up to Vaughan. To start slotting LRT into existing transit technologies is a recipe for riders disappearing. I can tell you there are hundreds of people, including people I know personally, who move in this city for the sole reason of avoiding subway transfers because people on long commutes do not want to stand on a platform waiting for the next train. They don't want to wait, get on a train, get off a train, get on a train, get off a train. You think you're going to attract riders to this. People are going to get, on a Downs, get off the subway at Downsview, 
take a bus across Shepherd to Young and Shepherd, get on a subway to Don Mills, and then get off again to LRT. They're not going. They're not going to bother. They're going to drive. They're just not going to commit to this. I think it is vital that we not go on the cheap. Look, we wouldn't start closing our police stations and putting money into Neighborhood Watch. We wouldn't start putting replacing our library branches with, with, with bookmobiles. And, and we, certainly, we certainly wouldn't be, uh, you know, we, no, we, not a bad idea. We, certainly, <laughs> we certainly wouldn't be going on the cheap and calculating costs per ride when we need a public good as important as transit. I can also say that, that when it comes to, to infrastructure and economic stimulus, subway building is one of the best tools we have. Hundreds of millions of dollars in economic stimulus purchasing power, hundreds of person hours in employment, not just during the construction phase, but in the years, uh, in the years afterwards in, ma in maintaining. It represents a true legacy in city building and transit building. Therefore, I will be supporting uh, a few of the motions, but I want to bring your attention to Councillor Kelly's motion. And incrementalism is essential because every time we build incremental, like any other city in, in, the, in, the, um, in the Western world, we spend what we have, and we move forward on an incremental basis. Councillor Pasternak, do you need an extension? No, oh, that's, that's fine. Thank you very much. Oh, you don't want an extension? Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> I, it's just that you were in the middle of your speech, so. <laughs> I, uh, ma Madam Speaker, I, I thought I would go through my first four-year term without asking for an extension, so that... Is... <laughs>